and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And today we're going to be talking about The Good Son by Jacqueline Machard. I just kind of picked this book up on a whim. I haven't read any other of her books, although through um, looking her up I see she's written a ton of others. And so I kind of went blind to this one. I hadn't really heard anything about it. But let me tell you what got me was I picked up the book in the store and I was just sort of flipping through the first couple of pages and I get to the first line and it says this. I was picking my son up at the prison gates when I spotted the mother of the girl he had murdered. And I was like, <laughs> okay, you got me. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> so first we're just going to talk about it in general. I'll be sure to give you a warning before we get into any spoilers. So I don't want to spoil anything accidentally for anyone. But so as you can tell from this book, or from that opening line, it's a story of a family who's kind of trying to find out where they go from here. Okay, so early on we learn that the, the girl that um, Thea's son, Stefan, has killed was his girlfriend. He was 17 years old when it happened and it's, it's a while before we learn any details about how it happened, but we know that he was very intoxicated the night that it happened and while he has no memory of doing it, he fully admitted that he must have even though he has no history of violence. There's my dog uh, jumping up onto the couch. Um, he has no history of violence. And even as a teenager, like um, he didn't want to be on the football team because he thought that was too violent of a sport, even though his dad is a football coach. So you just kind of get the, um, the feeling that this is a fairly gentle kid. Now he's large, he's very tall, very broad. So you start to think, well, Maybe that's how, you know, he accidentally killed this girl. So we learned that Stefan and this girl, Belinda was her name, they grew up together. They were friends growing up, um, high school sweethearts, the whole bit. And we learned that not only that, but the girl's mother, Jill, she was very close friends with Stefan's mother, Thea. So since Stefan has been put away, um, there have been protesters outside of the family home every day, protesting domestic violence, violence against young women, the whole bit. And um, Belinda's mom has been part of that. In fact, after Belinda was killed, she started an organization against violence against young women. And it's tough. So, for, you know, for Thea and her husband, um, not only have they lost their son to the prison system, they've lost their friends. They've lost, you know, Thea lost her best friend in Jill. They've lost community respect, like the whole thing, because of course, when somebody does something awful, pretty much every time eyes go to the parents, like, what did you do wrong? How did you fail this child? So Stefan's coming out now. He's 20. He only got three years and from what we can tell he was pretty much an, exempl an exemplary prisoner. Um, got in no trouble, anything like that. And so he's getting out and a lot of people have a problem with the fact that he was only in there for three years. And Thea even says, you know, I get that. <laughs> I also kind of have a problem. Like I'm so happy my son's coming home but I get that. That's not much time for the life of a young girl. So Stefan comes out and we immediately see him start to really want to do good. He tries to get a job. Nobody will hire him. Eventually he sees that um, a local church is hiring for a janitor and he kind of thinks, you know, if, if the church won't hire me, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. But the church ends up, in fact, hiring him and... Um, even though they're a little, the priest is a little iffy at first, but he does, he does hire him. And from there, he kind of starts a landscaping business as well. And he starts to really, um, start to get some of his confidence back and start to, um, feel like he's doing something productive. From there, he actually gets an idea for a, um, a foundation that he wants to start. I think it's called the Healing Foundation. And what it is, is if you have wronged someone in your life, 
whether recently or in the past, you can come to the foundation and they will sort of be a liaison for you to make right the wrongs that you have done. Like for one woman, when she was a teenager, she, her and her friends went to this cabin in the woods and they just trashed it for no reason other than they were young and dumb, you know? <laughs> And so many, many years later, now she goes to Stefan and asks for help in making that right. And they go and they fix up the cabin and it's a whole wonderful thing. Now, sometimes when, he, when the foundation goes to do the liaisoning, the other party is not receptive and that's fine. You know, sometimes people aren't ready to forgive, but he's doing this and he's feeling good and he's making a difference. And that's kind of where Stefan is. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Bia who starts getting really weird texts and phone calls from a girl who says that she was there the night that everything happened with Belinda and she knows what happened. And Thea kind of brushes it off as another, you know, one of the crazies who think they know something and are just trying to get under their skin. Um, but this girl will not let up and she eventually starts saying things like if Stefan starts to remember what happened you have to tell him not to say anything because then he could really be in danger and Thea's kind of like what is this you know she tries to tell her husband a bit but he's not really he's like listen they're just trying to get to you ignore them ignore the calls but she can't she can't ignore it there's something in her that she feels like maybe there is more to the story so from there, it's just, you know, it's kind of a story about forgiveness and redemption and family and friendship and being able to forgive for things that you yourself weren't forgiven for, if that makes sense. And I just thought it was a fantastic story. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. The only reason I didn't get the full five was there were some places that kind of dragged on a little bit. I thought the pacing could be a little quicker, but the story itself was excellent. It was excellent. Um, and if any of those things sounds like things you would like to read about, then I would definitely recommend it. Now we'll get into some of the spoilers because I need to talk about the ending. <laughs> so if you don't want to hear about the ending, now is definitely the time to click off. And I thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Now that they're gone, let's get into it. <laughs> I also, there was a smudge here. I didn't notice until just now, but I think I got it. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the spoilers. <sighs> I don't wanna go through every spoiler that happens because it kind of begins as a book, like I said, of forgiveness and redemption. And then it does kind of curve into kind of a domestic thriller sort of territory with the mysterious texture and collar. And eventually we learn out that the mysterious texture and color is a girl named Emily who was also romantically involved with Stefan's girlfriend, Belinda. And um, so at first she comes forward and she wants to tell what she knows. And the things she's telling aren't really helpful and not really... Um, uh, like not really worthy of the top secret manner she was delivering these messages. So you're kind of like, okay. She just kind of confirms that Stefan was out of his mind in drugs, um, that she was supplying him with the drugs. And we're talking, like we're not talking light drugs. Can you hear Trixie snoring? Yeah. So we're not talking light drugs. We're talking meth and cocaine and heroin. And he was never a drug user, but for whatever, he was so upset about this girl who was threatening his relationship and it just became a whole mess. And so that night, anything she was offering him, he was taking. So we're like, okay, well, that doesn't really clear anything up. And I don't know why you're being so weird about it. Later, what we find out is <laughs> Lisa that is, or no, sorry, Jill, that is Belinda's mom. She calls up Thea and she's like, you know what, I'm ready to forgive you and Stefan. Meet me at the cemetery by Belinda's grave and we can do this properly and we can all move on. So Thea's like, okay, all right, great. It's been, you know, at this point, I think it's the fourth anniversary of the day Belinda died. 
So they go and, you know, Belinda's having this sort of, uh, sorry, um, Jill is having this sort of speech where she's talking about, you know, the loss of her daughter and how difficult it is to move on and how the grief of losing a child isn't like regular grief. It kind of moves backwards. Instead of getting easier as time goes by, it gets harder. And it was a really moving portion of the book. And then all of a sudden, Jill pulls out a gun out of her bag and she said, I'm going to kill him and then I'm going to kill you and make it look like you killed him and then yourself. And Belinda's like, oh, not Belinda. <laughs> Thea's like, what? <laughs> what? I thought you were coming here to forgive him. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to forgive him, but I can't do it until he is dead. And so Thea's kind of freaking out internally, as she would be. She's trying to figure out what to do. She says she can remember before learning you rush someone with a gun, you run away from someone with a knife. And then as she's trying to figure it out, um, Stefan runs at Jill, knocks her down, or no, he falls down, doesn't quite get her down. Eventually, Jill does get knocked down and they try to... Um, restrain her until someone can call the police. And in the midst of all this, we get a confession from Jill, Belinda's mom, that it was actually her who had accidentally killed Belinda. She, there's a whole lot of reasons why she, Jill was there that night to harm. And she didn't come there with the intent to harm, but she came with, she was angry. She had found a photograph that had must have fallen out of um, Belinda's purse and in the photograph it's Belinda and Emily and they're kissing under a waterfall and she's very upset about this and so she goes to confront Belinda and she's mad at Stefan like she thinks I don't know what maybe if he had been a better boyfriend Belinda wouldn't be out experimenting or something like that and she gets so worked up that she picks up the, a golf club and she goes to swing it at Stefan, but Belinda steps in the middle to try to break it up and she hits Belinda. And she's the one that accidentally killed her. And then, you know, Stefan's so out of drugs, he doesn't remember anything about that night. Eventually he passes out. Jill puts his hands all over the golf club so it's his prints that are found. And it's just like, <laughs> it's a lot. So from there, what happens is, of course, we don't really hear about it, but we know because of the ending that Jill ends up getting arrested and getting convicted and spending time. Thea's thrilled because um, Stefan's name is now cleared. And at first she's like, we're going to do all the interviews and the book deals and this and this just because the, you know, the, the feeling of, I was right all along and you guys were so cruel to us is so strong but as time goes by that's not important to her anymore she just wants her and her family to get back to living their normal lives and then we get to the final paragraph and I'm going to read it to you it's very short but when I finished this book and I finished that sentence the final sentence I was crying my husband's sitting there he's like oh, what's wrong this really got to me and this this is the part that illustrates forgiving someone who never forgave you. I'm just gonna read it to you real quick <laughs> and try not to cry when I do. <laughs> so Jill's in prison. So it's this is Thea and she says, I park my car outside the gates. Inside I hand over my big leather purse and submit to the wand and wait while they flip through the books and magazines, the pretty stationery and stamped envelopes that are so important for sending letters out in the hopes that letters will come. There's a list and mine is the only name on it. I fill out a form on the line that specifies relationship to inmate. I write friend. So that's her going to visit Jill. And that just kicked me right in the feelings. Jill was so, first of all, Jill lied about the whole thing, but Thea understands, or she tries so hard to understand that the accident, Jill accidentally killing her own daughter, sent her into literal insanity and grief. She was 
so lost and so upset. So her never forgiving Stefan for the accident, it was because in her heart she still held him responsible for her accident. And she never forgave them and she treated Thea like absolute garbage, would never, would never talk to her, would never be her friend after what happened. But Thea, Thea's like, no, if anything, she needs a friend more now. And so she's the only one who visits Jill. And that really got me in the feelings. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. Forgiveness is so important. Um, even for things that were like, how, how can I forgive that? Forgiveness is for your own peace of mind, right? Your own, your own peace, your own sanity, your own healing. And so that Jill could do that when it was not offered to her or her son in, in particular. Um, I thought it was beautiful, well written, and I loved it. So there you go, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Next up, we're going to be reading The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Can't wait to read that. And I hope you're having a great weekend. And I will see you again really soon, probably with the final two chapters of Pride and Prejudice. Bye, guys.